So, uh, quickly about me, uh, Justin Dealey, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, I love WordPress conversations. First and foremost, I'm a dad. I have a beautiful five-year-old, blue-eyed, blue blonde-haired little girl that's going to cause me trouble later on in life. Uh, I'm a GoDaddy supervisor. I'm also a side hustler. Uh, I've had different side hustles over the year. Uh, over the years, sorry. Um, usually around WordPress or social media marketing, things like that. Uh, WordPress enthusiast for over seven years. I'm also WordCamp Phoenix organizers. Tickets on sale now. Buy them, buy them, buy them. Uh, no, it's going to be a super fun camp. Uh, I also love Bitmojis, as you'll see in this presentation. They are amazing, and there's a response to everything. So, before I really want to tell you guys about multi site, I want to talk about basically my first experience with multi site. So when I was new to GoDaddy, I was just a customer service agent. Uh, I didn't really deal with hosting in general. I just dealt with like, uh, website builder and email and stuff like that. And then I get a call. I'm going to call him Frank. Uh, so Frank calls in, frantic. He's panicking. He's like, my sites are down. My sites are down. I'm like, OK, cool. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll make this as right. Like, let's, what did you do? It's like, I was editing my functions.php file. I kind of knew WordPress, like designing. I knew that you would really don't want to mess with functions.php. So I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll try to figure this out. Um, so we're going, and then he talks about multi-site, and a site is a multi-site. And I didn't know what that meant. So I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, while I'm frantically Googling what the hell a multi-site is. Uh, and then I, I realized, and I, then I ask him, how many sites did this impact? Once I figured out what it was. He's like, 14 of my clients. Like, all right, now I get why you were so frantic and so panicked. And he had, he was a great developer. He had uptime monitoring set up for his clients. Um, but he had uptime monitoring set up for his clients. So his clients were calling him saying, what's going on with my website? So he's trying to get that going. Uh, long story short, we end up finding out he just has a backup that he can restore to. We got this site up and running. He was like this, I was like this. We're like, cool, let's, let's get it going. And then by the end of the conversation, I, I just asked him, like, with, with all this risk, why multi-site? Like, why, why would you actually do that? Uh, and we'll get to that in a little bit, what his answer was. So what is multi-site? What is this weird word uh, added to the end of WordPress? So from the WordPress Codex, it's a feature of WordPress 3.0 and later versions that allow multiple virtual sites to share a single WordPress installation. What that means is essentially you, you have that one site, but you can create unlimited sites, and literally unlimited sites as your server allows it, which is pretty cool. So it started with WordPress MU way, way, way back when. It was created to basically make a network of blogs around this similar topics, same niche, things like that. June 2010, WordPress integrated the feature into Core and enabled the creation of a network of websites. So now it's no longer just a blog to create posts in that network. You can have full-fledged WordPress sites with a single install. Uh, talking plugins, themes, uh, all that good stuff. So if you imagine this as the, the, the multi-site directory, so we have our main WordPress site, right? It's going to control everything, and literally everything. You can kind of equate this like a landlord. So your landlord has everything, and then you control what your renters can do. So you don't want them to paint the walls, you, don't, you tell them, don't paint the walls. Same thing with this. You give them the themes that you want them to have, you give them the plugins that you want them to have, the settings, the upload limits, things like that. The, the one site controls everything, but it's all under that same umbrella. So some terminology to know when it comes to multi-site. So a network refers to the entire multi-site network, uh, i.e. your WordPress install, a site refers to one of the blogs or sites created as part of the network. Network admin is the central dashboard to manage all sites within your WordPress network. And a super admin, if you're running the, the multi-site, this would be you, uh, is the person who looks after it all. You're the landlord. You dictate whether or not people can do what you want them to do. So how is the admin different? So when, when it comes to multi-site, you get a couple of extra features inside of WordPress as that super admin. I'm going to actually show you a live site. Yay, live demos. Um, cool. So this is all right. This is the 
network admin for a multi-site, if you all can see it. So on the left-hand side, that's kind of hard to see. Uh, upper left, you can access all the sites in your network. You have your network admin for your main settings, and you have your sites that you control under that network. On the left, you can make your updates, and with the, the multi-site itself, you control all the updates on the site. You don't have to go to each individual website to actually make those updates, so it's pretty cool. Uh, upgrade network, on the left-hand side, there are sites, if you can see it, and you can access all the sites and manage them that way too, or just add a new site. So if you want to add a new site in your network, you go to add new and create your path. When it comes to multi-site, there's two different ways or, or methodologies behind it. You can set up a subdomain or you can set up a path. So the subdomain being something dot your domain name, something one dot your domain name, and a path being your domain name dot com slash something, right? Now the thing is, if your website has already been set up and established, you cannot set up the, the paths. It has to be a brand new install if you want it to be the slash something. You can set up the subdomain at any point. Brand new setup, uh, or while the site's existing. And you set up your site title, the you admin email, then add site, and it pop up here. On the left hand side, you have your users. So you can see me here, I'm a super admin. Um, so I get to control everything. I can add new users here, or if I had other people in this fake network, I'd be able to see them all here. Themes, so what's cool about this is you get to control, again, what, what, your, what your network has access to. So if I want to make sure that they don't have 2017 on, on their list, I make sure that's disabled. Uh, if I want 2019 to be there, I'll enable it. Maybe I want 2016. So I click the enable it, and now everyone in my network can have 2016 on their site. Same thing with plugins. I can tell them what I want them to use and what I don't want them to use. It's really cool with niche sites, like say you have like a community of some sort that, that has to have this plugin, right? Uh, so you can get that set up. So now with this too, only the super admin can install plugins and can install themes. So if there's someone on your network that wants something special and you don't allow it, they'll probably have to go through you and just ask you. Uh, you'll do your fact checks or make sure it's all good. Install it if need be or charge a premium for it. Whatever you want to do there. Um, so that, that's really it for the admin itself. I'll go into one of these sub-sites. Now, as a super admin, any sites that you have in your multi-site network, you, your, what you have set up as a network-enabled theme or plugin doesn't apply to you. If you're a super admin, you get to do what you want. So even if you have not enabled it for your network, you can still use it, which is kind of cool for your main site. You can make sure that you have all the cool plugins that do all these things, but maybe don't want them to do it because it's a resource hog or whatever that looks like. But inside here, you can notice if I, I mouse over plugins, there's no add new. They don't even get that option. All they can do is activate or deactivate. That's it. All right, now jumping back. Anybody have any questions about the admin area before I move on? Groovy. All right, so now the dashboard, uh, sorry, database. So again, this is going to be one installation, right? So that means there's only going to be one database. Uh, so if, if you're running on a host that doesn't give you a lot of, of uh, speed and RAM and, and a large database, that might be an issue. So you start adding networks in this blog, that database starts piling up and piling up and piling up. Now the structure, most people will never actually need to touch this, but if you like going in and managing databases, things like that, your sites will have the structure of WP underscore, and then your main site's there, and then WP underscore one, and then all that uh, website's content, WP underscore two, and then all that site's content. Now if you're trying to figure out where that is, it kind of get kind of, it gets a little bit complicated about which site this refers to, which database. Um, but talk to me after if you really want to know. <laughs> your, uh, your website structure, so if, since this is one website, it only has one install directory. Now if you have separate website installs, you have different folders for each. But every site in this network lives in the WP content slash uploads folder. 
So they don't have their own separate installs on your root or on your public HTML. So if you need to manage any sites in there, uh, mess with theme, things, uh, theme files, things like that, it's all going to be in that WP content slash uploads. And then it's like site one, site two, site three. So real life uses in the wild, real talk. So WordPress.com, it is the largest multi-site network. How many people have used WordPress.com before? Around a few of us? Cool, so you know how limiting it is. They don't give you plugins or themes, third-party themes rather. They give you what they give you, and that's kind of on purpose, right? If you want to add a domain name, it's, it's a freemium charge. So if you want to do that, they charge you. They also make sure that it's super simple to use and it's not complex, so they can help you and support you. If you start installing third-party theme, themes and plugins, they're like, all right, cool, you're kind of on your own. So WordPress.com is the most popular use case example. So back to Frank. So when I asked him, why? Why multi-site? My first experience ever, it was chaos. Why would anyone want to do this? So he's a web, web designer, and he's using multi-site for his clients. Uh, and the reason why is, one, he gets recurring revenue by being able to host the websites. Two, he has full control. How many people, uh, how many people are designers in here? Few of us. Uh, how many of your clients have ever broken their own site? Quite a few. Quite a few. How many people have broken their own sites? <laughs> <laughs> Right? So that's why, that was his big reason why he had multi-site set up, because he did not want his clients going in and installing some random plugin because they saw something on Google or whatnot. They don't want them going in and installing a random theme that has terrible security risks, right? He wanted a controlled environment and that made sense to them and essentially dumbed it down so that they couldn't break it. And they were fine with that because they can go in and manage it without breaking it. That, that, that scariness is gone. So those are his reasons. So we have site one set up uh, with his client, site two set up with his client, site three. And his themes are already set up, the plugins are set up that they need, there's nothing more. And if he ever needs to go and make changes, he could quickly log in to his super admin and all of the sites are listed right there, they can jump right in. He doesn't have to remember which password was for what or have one password for everything, which is awful, but I've seen it. Um, so yeah, it, it helped him out. And after he told me that, I was like, okay, that makes sense, I, I get it. So news and media sites. So these are pretty popular use cases for multi-site. Uh, the New York Times blog is a super popular multi-site network that lets, uh, has different areas for the sites that kind of all works. Rooters Blogs is just one that I kind of found that uses multi-site for their different categories and then each uh, their authors sometimes have different, their own type of multi-site with their information. And then BBC America was, a, was an interesting one. Uh, so they're a, a media, uh, media site uh, resource over in the UK. But what they do is they'll have their main hub site, and instead of each show having their own websites thrown up or whatever, they'll, they give them control of what they want to. So each show has their own site in that network, which is pretty cool. So then they can make all their changes, but it still stays on brand. Because BBC America has the, the header locked in, and the footer locked in, and the style locked in. But then the shows can make their own edits and make it their own. Educational websites. So on the left and right, University of Austin, Texas, and the University of British Columbia blogs, uh, they let their professors and students create their own websites uh, inside their multi-site network. So they can create articles for their students or vice versa. Uh, so that's a pretty cool use case. And then EduBlogs is pretty similar to WordPress.com. Uh, it's tailored towards education. So if you're a teacher, you can go in there and quickly spin up a website. So if you have multiple locations, uh, I have a couple examples listed up here, but ones that could apply to us is if we had a couple of brick and mortar stores, instead of having separate websites for each, having to manage that, you can quickly make a multi-site network and easily flip-flop back and forth and share information uh, to make your life a lot easier. Then it's just one website to manage as you grow and grow and grow, which is awesome, right? You don't want to give yourself more admin work. This kind of takes it away which is really popular with restaurants. And then real estate is one that I didn't really think about at first uh, as a, a good use case, right? Uh, I've seen real estate agents create, basically create their own website and then they'll send the listings off to Zillow or wherever else they're, they're listing it MLS. Uh, but I, as I researched this a little bit more, I saw 
then basically create their own multi-site network, and then each single home property or, or whatever property got its own website. And they quickly split it up, had the same branding, just added the content in, and then listing two, same thing, split it up, got that website in, easily manage it. When it was sold or when they're done with it, they just deleted it and moved on from there. It's a pretty cool use case if you're looking to do multi-site. So some pros to using multi-site. So it's, again, single login to access all sites within your network. Every site can have its own admin, and each admin will be able to manage their own site. So there's still that admin, they can still go and control whether or not, whether or not they want subscribers, things like that. Uh, shared plugins and themes, so if you install it once, it's there across the board. One update to rule them all. Uh, so one update for your themes and plugins, or even core, and your, your entire network is updated. You can monetize this, whether you want, whether or not you want to host people's websites and charge it for that, or a freemium model, where if you want extra features such as like domain mapping or certain plugins you want to have installed. I know I've seen a couple where they'll set up a site for you, but now if you want to be able to create your own courses and have a course plugin, then you have to pay a little bit extra. There's all sorts of freemium options on there. And then you control what's installed on your network. So some cons to using multi-site. There are some. Again, one update to rule them all. So Frank, he made one update to a functions.php file and it took down this entire network. Um, so if you, don't own, if you don't always know what you're doing, it may not be the best idea. Uh, you have a lot of responsibility with this multi-site now too. Right? Like you, you're not just maintaining your own site. The things you do aren't just impacting the one site or the one client. It could potentially impact all clients or all setups that you have on there, right? So your multi-site down means that every site is down. It's never just one. Uh, it's pretty rare. I've never seen it personally. I've been working in the, the hosting world for, for quite some time. Shared resources in a single database. You need to make sure your hosting it has a little bit of power behind it so it can actually manage a large network as you grow. And then one hacked site means your network is hacked. Uh, again, this is a shared single install, so if something gets in, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, hopefully you have something like WordPress to help it out or, or some third party malware cleanup team to, to help you out and get that cleaned up. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, I'm gonna talk about when you shouldn't use it. I'm a huge fan of multi-site personally. I've done a lot with it and I've learned a lot from it after breaking it and fixing it, things like that. Uh, but there are some cases when you just shouldn't use it. If you're afraid of too much responsibility, again, that one change to rule them all, probably shouldn't do it. it it's scary. Like I did it with just test sites and just playing around. I, I, it, if I had to manage a large network, I probably would hire a large, large team. Um, this, if the sites were going to be vastly different, so we'll take like the web designer as an example. If he's going to have one of his clients have like full-fledged e-commerce, then one's just a static site, then one's an online course site, and the one's, who knows, they're all vastly different, that's going to be way too many plugins, way too many things set up on your entire network, right? You want to keep them pretty in line, uh, make it make sense. Because then if your clients start seeing some random plugins, they're going to start activating stuff, and I don't want to deal with that. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with migrating sites off of multi-site, that, that process can be a little bit complex. Migrating in general, things can go wrong, so if the multi-site just adds another uh, cog to it. If you only need to manage a few sites with the caveat of the brick and mortars, you have lo multiple locations, that's a great use case, even if you have two. But in any other example, just create different sites. It's a lot easier to manage and less responsibility. Uh, and if, then if, you need to, if you're trying to do this to create staging sites, there are much better ways to do it. Uh, we'll talk after. There's plugins, there's hosting providers, there's all sorts of things. But don't do it for staging environments. All right, so now we understand multi-site a little bit more, at least uh, the gist of it. So how do we set up your first multi-site? So I'm gonna go through the, the general steps. It is code to copy pasta. Don't worry, I'll give you a quick link if this interests you in actually setting up. Uh, but I'll give you the step-by-step. The -step. There's essentially three. So step one, you're gonna open up your wpconfig.php file uh, located in just your root folder. You know, right above the line that reads, that's all, stop editing. You add that little wp allow multi-site true. Uh, save it, upload it back up. Then step two, in the WordPress admin, you go to tools, network setup. You choose subdomain uh, or subdirectory if it's your brand new install. 
add your title and click install. Then step three is final step. You copy some code that's going to give you, it's going to say, hey, copy this in your wp-config, copy this in your HT access, or paste it, rather, uh, and save. And then you're done. So it's three steps, a lot of copy pasta. You don't have to know code to set up multi-site. There are also some plugins that can help you set it up, although I haven't tested any, so I don't want to make any recommendations. But it's three steps. If you know how to FTP, you can do it. And again, uh, sorry, x.co, I don't know where that weird icon is there. x.co slash multi-site uh, links over to WPMU Dev's full-fledged guide of setting up multi-site. That's what they do all day, so it's a, it's a great resource. And then this is that, that page that you copy. That's why I didn't read everything or write it down. It's a lot to read. Um, but you would just copy paste that over. So key things to note, uh, the wp-config.php is going to have a couple extra lines of code. So if, you, if it ever gets wiped for any reason, you can't just get a fresh copy. Uh, you have to make sure those couple extra lines of code you copy pasta it over are back in. Again, the WP content uploads folder is going to house each of your subsites in your network. Every site will be housed in one database. Make sure you have the resources, and only the network admin can install themes and plugins. So a couple of plugins to help you with your multi-site. So I'm a huge fan of MU Dev and what they do with multi-site. That's literally how they got their uh, got their name. But Pro Sites allows you to essentially do what uh, WordPress.com does or what EngieBlogs does. You can set up a free network so they can go and quickly register for free or if you want to charge them, you can. And you can sell different tiers on your, your actual environment. So if you want certain plugins to have a certain tier, cool, you do that. If you want to have more space, cool, you can charge for that. You have a little tiered system. It helps you monetize that, that, that multi-site blog because we all like money. Uh, ultimate guide to domain mapping. So MUDev has a domain mapping plugin. There are a couple of others on the WordPress repository too that can let you set up so people, so instead of that subdomain dot your domain, you can let the people on your network use their own custom domain name and point it over. So again, that kind of goes back to the pro sites too if you want to make sure you can actually charge for it, do what WordPress.com does, great. You can set up a free one using my subdomain or if you want your own, extra eight bucks a month or whatever you end up charging. Uh, we all know that spam is an issue with WordPress. Uh, I've seen I've seen sites with literally 10,000 comments. He's like, I don't know how they got there. I have no comments. But same thing with your multi-site. So you get spammers that will just create uh, multi-sites in your or create network or sorry, rather, create sites in your network rather. Uh, so this helps stop that. So if it looks fishy or, or whatever, it's going to block it for you. I highly recommend having this or something similar. Multi-site clone duplicator. Uh, so this one lets you quickly clone a site in your network into a new one uh, without having to redo everything. Literally just take a copy pasta right over, and you can go ahead and make your changes based on whatever the use case is. Uh, Multi-site plugin manager. So this will help if you want to have certain plugins automatically activated when you're the, whoever person signs up for your, your network. It's already activated there. Or if you want to have person A have X plugins and person B have Y plugins, it's a way around that so they don't see everything. Um, so it might, might work for you if you want to do the, the web design route and do it from there. And my absolute recommendation is have a backup option in place. There are so many options to back up your site for super cheap or just time, right? Just have a backup, have something. Even if you don't have a multi-site, have a backup. Even it's local, it's third party on Google Drive, AWS, whatever it is, do it. So my verdict, try it if it makes sense. If multi-site sounds interesting to you, test it out, see if it works. Uh, if you have any questions, like specifics, I'm happy to chat about it. I've tried a lot of different stuff. I've one of my my networks was to I created pre-made sites that someone would buy and spin up and create my network. So I've done a little bit of advanced coding stuff into that. So hit me up, we'll talk, we'll see if it works for you or if I have any suggestions. I'm absolutely for it. Um, but that's all I have for you. Uh, who has questions about multi-site? Do you say subdomains or, uh, or subdirectories? Correct. You can't do multiple domains? You can. Uh, and that's with... 
uh, domain mapping plugin. So NUDev has one. It's in the, the WordPress.org repository. We set that up. Uh, the only thing is, they whoever points the domain to you has to manually update the A record. And if you say like cPanel or something like that, you have to make sure you add the domain name on the, the hosting account. That way the server knows what to do. So with the subdomain, I didn't mention it, but I'm glad you called it up, like you reminded me, you can set up what's called a wildcard subdomain, which is just the asterisk, and point it to your hosting account's IP address. And the same thing inside of cPanel, you have that asterisk as the subdomain. So now, no matter what anyone creates, crazyexample.yourdomain.com, it'll auto automatically be there, which will help out. Any other questions about multi-site? Great, that's all I got. Thank you guys.